I want to thank the True Royal family for this video that I'm about to do. Um, she had brought up on one of my last videos about Alaska um, having a meth and opioid problem that they also have a problem with domestic violence. I was curious to find out what the top states were that had domestic violence problem. And I was really surprised at what came up. I'm going to see if you can figure this one out. It's very obvious. But let's get started. Domestic violence statistics, the horrific reality. Now, back in the past, every time I would read articles on domestic violence, they would always try to play as if it was happening among black people more than everybody else, which is completely false. It's just another falsehood. You know, these people think they're slick. Anything negative, it's mostly black people doing it. If there's a disease, it's mostly black people with the disease. If there's any type of, it's mostly black people. To, you know, I, I know your game and I'm telling you, you're wasting your time coming to me with that game it surely will not work. <laughs> okay, so let's get started. <clears throat> Domestic violence is in many ways a quiet epidemic. Though in plain sight, victims are often invisible, fearfully denying their situation and hiding behind the facade of a happy home. But the statistics reveal a shocking reality. Every nine seconds, a woman in America is assaulted or beaten, according to the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence. A mind-boggling one in three women has been a victim of physical brutality by an intimate partner, the group also reports, and it's one in four men that are also abused in relationships, ladies and gentlemen. That makes intimate partner violence the single greatest cause of injury to women per the Domestic Violence Intervention Program. Hard to imagine the scope we're talking about. Consider this, the number of women killed by a current or former male partner added up to nearly double the soldier lives lost in the uh, Afghanistan and Iraq wars. So um, during the same 11 year time frame, Huffington Post calculated last year. That's pretty bad. Every nine seconds. Wow. That's really messed up. It just goes to show you America's really a very messed up place. And my feeling about domestic violence, they have set the entire foundation of this country on violence. Everything these folks achieved was through violence, everything. So what makes you think if you're going to build your entire nation on violence, that is going to disappear in your household. It's not. Okay, that's one thing America has taught. America has taught the world violence, killing, stealing, raping, pillaging. That's what you taught the world. So it's not shocking that domestic violence and broken down relationships are constantly happening in America. Not shocking. <laughs> Domestic violence is an epidemic, no matter what statistic you look at. Yet, as a society, we often close our eyes to it. Amy Sanchez, director of Break the Cycle, an organization on the No More Steering Committee, tells GoodHousekeeping.com. And although the rate of family violence in the U.S. has slightly decreased, during the last 10 years, there are still millions of women and children that we know are living in violent homes every day, Sanchez notes. If we had a health issue that we knew was affecting millions of people, we'd work hard together to figure it out. 
like with what's been done to address smoking and heart disease. But because this is a private issue, a family matter, people don't talk about it. In an effort to topple the ta that taboo, goodhousekeeping.com pulled together a slew of surprising statistics on the subject. And the data is eye-opening. Okay, who experiences domestic violence? Now, like I said, in the past, you could pull up article after article. Oh, black women get it the most. Oh, black women get it the most. No, I don't believe that for one second. And the reason why I don't believe it is because of the states that are named as the top domestic violent states are predominantly white. So no, I do not believe it's mostly happening to black people at all. Okay, but let's get into this. The uncomfortable truth, the majority of marriages will include some violence. The domestic violence intervention program reports that the FBI estimates violence will occur during the course of two thirds of all marriages, occupation, income level, urban or suburban environment, studies show that none of these factors is an indicator of more or less incidents of domestic abuse. When it comes down to radical divide, there is no difference either white, black and Hispanic. Women all incur about the same rates of violence committed by an intimate partner, according to the DVIP. As far as pinning down which U.S. states have the highest rates of domestic violence, one report identifies, and listen to these states, ladies and gentlemen, Alaska as the worst. And Alaska does not have a big black population. So we know where that's coming from. And I believe, and I'm gonna have to go over research. I believe Sarah uh, Palin, her elder son got, um, I think either arrested or something happened to him where he had to go to court for domestic violence. Okay, so Alaska is the worst. Now listen to this, it includes Maine, we know there's no big population of black people in Maine, New Mexico, Texas, Rhode Island, another place where there's not a lot of black people, Wisconsin, and Vermont. And we know Vermont does not have a high level of black people there. But those are the states that have the worst and the highest amount of domestic violence. Alaska, Maine, New Mexico, Texas, Rhode Island, Wisconsin, and Vermont on the list. But notes that varying criteria by state makes a definitive ranking impossible. Ironically, it's the incredible persuasiveness of the violence that Deborah Tucker of the National Center on Domestic and Sexual violence says keep people in denial. Many don't want to acknowledge it because it leads to understanding more than they want to face, she explained. They want to label it a lot of times as a sort of low life problem, but no, there's a lot of wealthy people that do this stuff too. So it's not just poor people. But it must be people who are un uneducated and disadvantaged, which is just a way to distance yourself and feel like that won't happen to people in your class, in your neighborhood. It's self-protection, but it's everywhere and that's really hard to accept. Women between 25 and 34 are reportedly the most vulnerable to partner violence while 85% of domestic abuse victims are women, the Department of Justice 2000 National Violence Against Women survey finds 
findings suggest that women's experiences are hardly equal. Lesbian couples experience less intimate partner violence than do heterosexual. But listen to homosexual men, listen to this. On the flip side, men who endure domestic abuse living with male intimate partners are the most victimized male group. So two men in an intimate relationship have a far more domestic violence than anyone else. Nearly double the percent of cohabiting, habitating men report being raped, physically assaulted, and or stalked by a male cohabitant compared to those residing with or married to women. So your chances of being in a domestic violence um, relationship is greater if you are a homosexual man. That's what this is pretty much saying. Why women stay? Only 34% of people who are injured by intimate partners receive medical care for their injuries. And even fewer get law enforcement involvement. Just 25% of physical assaults perpetuated against women are reported to the police annually. The National Violence Against Women survey reveals, I've seen women go a week with serious injury before getting help, shares the National Center on Domestic and Sexual Violence, Deborah Tucker. Why? Many fear triggering an attacker's anger or having a plan to flee foil. And it's no wonder women are 70 times more likely to be killed in the two weeks after leaving than any other time during the relationship, the Domestic Violence Intervention Program reports. This is especially true for the spouses of law enforcement. And yes, police officers probably have some of the highest domestic violence in the country. In fact, I had a cousin and this must have been during the 1980s, she was married to a cop, a Philadelphia cop. And she got into <clears throat> a physical fight with him one day on a Sunday. And they had to page my uncle in church to go over to the house to go get her. It got that bad, he had pulled his gun out on her. So I do know that it is high among cops very high but you know that's not shocking look at how cops do their jobs that's all they do is fight and abuse people and kill people so they carry that shit into their household it, they, they don't turn that mess off and that's what people don't realize it's not like you do that job and then you turn it off when you walk through the doors of your house no they keep right on going with their violence on their own families and suicides are highest among cops too. Um, this is especially true for spouses of law enforcement. Multiple studies have found that 20 to 40% of police officer families experience domestic violence in contrast to 10% of families in the general population. Not only are the abusers, friends and colleagues, the very people victims would turn for help, but the abuser, is also trained to use a gun, which increases the risk of homicide by 500%. Loretta, you got bad timing, girl. Well, hold on, y'all. I'll be right back. All right, y'all. Sorry about that. All right, let me pick up from where I left off. Not only are the abusers of friends and colleagues, the very people victims would turn to for help, but the abuser is also trained to use a gun, which increases the risk of homicide by 500%. And this is why you will periodically hear about cops shooting their wives, but one thing they always do, oh, it was accident. Oh, it was, it's always an accident, you know? 
And believe me, those are domestic violence situations. That's not just happening by chance. And for half of the women who do manage to leave abusive partners, it's not no easy feat. The estimate 98% of abused women also experience financial abuse in which their partner controls all of the money. And between 21 and 60% of domestic violence victims lose their jobs due to issues that their abuse cause. So they may escape, but with no income and no financial resources. Then there's the where to go problem. The third leading cause of homelessness among families is domestic violence, according to the National Coalition for the Homelessness. We hear as advocates over and over, why doesn't she leave? Sanchez said, but when you look at all of the things that are barriers to leaving, it becomes clear there are so many reasons. What we really need to be asking is why does the abuse keep happening? I don't know if I agree with you that on that, Sanchez. <laughs> um, it, it's really hard to get people to leave those situations, even if we clearly see how bad it is. Um, I have known situations or heard about folks trying to help family members out of those situations, and they keep going back. No matter how much you take them in and you try to help, they turn around and go back. And I've seen and heard this a couple of times in my life. Um, the plague perpetuates itself. Each year, 10 million children are exposed to domestic violence, which the Center for Disease Control and Prevention has declared a serious preventable public health problem. Everything's a public health problem these days, huh? According to the Center for Women and Families, and the one in 15 kids exposed to it, a heartbreaking 90% are eyewitnesses who will feel the effects of it for their entire family, for their entire lives. And that's true. That's very true. And that's why so many of these um, children grow up and they end up in abusive situations themselves. The World Health Organization, all right. The World Health Organization reports that globally men were exposed to domestic violence as children are three to five times, I'm sorry, three to four times more likely to perpetuate intimate partner violence as adults than men who did not. And that's true because the fathers that are doing this in the household try to make their children believe this is normal when it really isn't. Young people who are living in violent homes are six times more likely to attempt suicide at Sanchez. An estimated half of these men choose not to perpetuate the problem or take their own lives, but they still often suffer too. In personal relationships, she explains, because the adult didn't learn healthy relationships as a child or critically important trust and respect, which is very true very true, you know, um, it, it's really hard. I know, you know, we don't like to see these kind of things, but in many cases, if you're not promoting a healthy relationship in the household, this is indeed what filters down to your children. And it's just not the boys. A lot of times, that's why you hear women talking so badly or treating a man so badly because they hear so many negative things in their household about men. Oh, men ain't no good. The men's ain't no good. You can't trust them men's, you know, and I've heard that stuff growing up and I'm sure I'm not the only female that have heard that. So when you grow up, you, you think to yourself, oh, well, shoot, I can't get taken by this man. Wait a minute. But, you know, you have to get beyond that. And just understand everybody is not out to get you, <laughs> okay? Everybody's not out to get you. 
All right, so let's move on. How change begins. While there are laws in place about domestic violence, Sanchez says that it's not um, sufficient. We haven't shift the behaviors towards it that convey it's okay to beat up your girlfriend. In fact, one in five female high school students report being physically or sexually abused by a dating partner. Wow. The key Sanchez adds is changing people's attitudes. People need to understand that it is everybody's business, not just that of the cops, the judges alone. We all have an obligation to take this on, pointing to the shifts that she says our culture has seen towards smoking and recycling in recent decades. 30 years ago, it was culturally appropriate to smoke wherever you were at home, on a job, she explained Sanchez. Now it's against the law and culturally inappropriate. She shifts norms and behaviors. It is the same thing with recycling. Growing up, I remember we didn't think twice about throwing garbage out the window of a moving car on a highway. Today, we've changed our uh, behaviors, our values, and people recycle. That's what we're trying to change now with respect to domestic violence. We know how to do this. Well, good luck, Sanchez. America's a really screwed up place with a lot of screwed up people. And it's a hard thing to break. When you built your entire nation on violence, of course, people are going to be violent. That's just the way it is. If you didn't want America to be violent, then you should not have stole it in such a violent way. So violence, ladies and gentlemen, is here to stay. I hate to say it, but it is. As long as we are in this Gentile world, violence and evil and killing and raping is here to stay. Please tell me what you think. Leave your comments and subscribe and don't forget to hit on that notification button. Peace, family.